Once we've added the classes, we can go in and start adding the details. And the first detail that we're going to add are the operations. So this is the functionality that any object of this class will have. And we remember that when we um, got things from the use case diagrams, we went ahead and pulled off the nouns, which gave us some clues about what we might want to do, uh, what the functionality that might go with them. So we might want to select a movie or rate a movie or remove a DVD. So all these things were off of the use case diagram. So now we can go in and specifically say what do we want to add as the operation. And here our understanding of the system will come into play. And since we've gone through and we've worked so far with the system, we've um, done the fun functional requirements, we've done use case diagrams, maybe we've done other kinds of diagrams. Because we'll use all of our understanding of the system to understand what kind of operations we want to have with a movie. So let's go ahead and look at a movie class and what kind of operations we want to add there. So we know that we're going to want to um, select a movie. So that came from our customer use case that they selected a movie. And that means it would add that movie to the cart, to the shopping cart. So th what would that be in relation to our movie? What, how could we name that method? So we might say, well, that this is actually changing the status. So currently that particular movie is has been selected. We would have to determine, does it now become unavailable to another customer? Or um, does it immediately, once it goes to a cart, become unavailable? We're anticipating that this customer will rent it. So it's no longer available to another customer. So let's go with the assumption that it moves to unavailable, but not rented yet. So um, we could that really is changing a status. And remember, we had several things that were changing a status. In fact, we identified them. Shipping was um, processing a return or processing a rental was actually changing the status. So let's go ahead and create the operation change status. Now, when you're doing adding an operation to a class, it goes in the third um, section. The next one I want to add is rate. So I want to be able to rate a movie. So I want to add more space. Notice there's no more room to put in here, but if I select that whole field and I do control enter or right click duplicate, then I get another field in that operation section. And so I want to go, I want to be able to rate the movie. And notice with operations, we always put the opening and closing parens. Now there are more details and you see these in the prototype, like the visibility and the type parameter and the type return. We won't be adding those in the analysis class diagram. We'll add those in a later diagram. Now notice that we have some DVD things and some movie file things. And that there are some really common things that there are common things. So rent, rent, um, add and remove. Those are all common between the two of them. So something you know about generalization and inheritance is that if you have something that's common, it goes in the general class. And then both of the ones that inherit will be able to have access to that. So, so these ones we for sure rent and add and remove. So change status is one is what rent is, right? We're changing it from uh, in process to rented that they've they finalized that rental option and now it's no longer available because it's been rented. So we already have that one. Let's go do ahead and add and remove a movie. So a control enter, add movie. Now let's think about that. If I'm going to add a movie, do I do that in the movie class? Do I add a movie in the movie class? And that doesn't make sense because I, if I'm going, I have to create a whole new object for it. So it won't be in that class. Adding a movie is something that's going to happen in the inventory class or the container class for the movie. So this is one of the really tricky things about uh, doing a class diagram, which you have to decide where does it fit. And adding a movie does not fit in the movie class because 
a movie class is only one movie. So if we're going to be adding movies, it has to be where there are multiple movies. So in inventory is where we're going to have multiple movies. So I can do add movie and print the, and put that operation there. So notice how even though we wanted to be able to add a movie file or add a DVD, those did not fit. Those were operations, yes, but they belonged in another another class. So here we have to think about what we're doing and be careful that we do it. Uh, remove a DVD. Oh, we've got that on there twice. We don't need that twice. Uh, dispose of a DVD and destroy a DVD. Those are two different types of removing a DVD. We had those as generalizations in there so that um, removing a DVD would fit both of those. Okay, now notice when the text is highlighted it doesn't work. I have to get off the text and on the object and then it'll do it. So remove and we have to see if we have this on both. Yep, so we have remove on both so it will be remove movie instead of remove either a DVD or well, it, right, so remove movie and that is either destroy or sell it. So we can wait for those rent we've got. Return. So this is when you return a movie. And again, that's a status. All right, changing the status. So we already have that. Receiving it is changing the status and recording the return. So it looks like right now we've got all of those. Movie files, we've got all of those. So location, it says we can release. A, lo a location can be released looks like I missed that class so here you get a double check what you've got going here so here's add we'll add the location class and we want to be able to release that location so again notice that the location itself if we're releasing one location out of many uh, we would want to identify that in the con in whatever class contains all of those locations. So we would need a container class for this because this is just one location but we need to have lots of locations. So now we see a need for a container class. So here let's call this, um, I'm going to call it physical storage. So it's uh, something different than our computer storage. And our physical storage is going to have lots of locations. And so we want to be able to release a location, and that would happen uh, when we destroyed a DVD, right? That, oh, that, that space no longer needs to be kept for that particular DVD, so we could release a location. So this is how you go through and identify the operations. One place to start is with the verbs that we found from the use case diagram we can identify those verbs and add them. So we can release look at inventory. We need to update the inventory. And what does that mean to update the inventory? That might be add a movie, remove a movie. And so we've already got add a movie and remove a movie there. And that's really how we update the inventory. So there's a, a subtract a movie. That would be the remove a movie. So we already got that. Archive uh, would be to if we're done with that, we no, no longer have any more of those, so we might need to archive a record. All right, and so you move through that and you look at each operation and identify whether it needs to be added and specifically what class it needs to be added in.